Welcome back to Esther's Breeze, where we sit back, chat, and shoot the breeze. Thank you all so much for joining us. You know, your constant love and support mean the world to us, and we are so, so appreciative of all that you do and your constant, constant support. A huge thank you to PAX Management. Uh, another thank you to publicist extraordinaire Steve Joyner, to my mentor and good friend, Mr. Robert D'Alessio, to my background techie and my partner in crime, Mr. Fernando Renzo. <laughs> there he is. And, um, you know, to all you folks, once again, for, for joining us. So Esther's Breeze is available on Esther Brzezinski's Facebook profile page. It's available on Esther's Breeze YouTube channel and on Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel as well. In about a day or so, the audio will be extracted, we will upload it, and then it will be available on Spotify and all other streaming platforms. I'm so excited for today's guest. We had a great chat backstage, and I just want to tell you a little bit about him. John Anthony, who is our guest tonight, he is an actor, director, and writer. He's a shining example of It's Never Too Late, as he began his acting career in 2014 at the age of 50 years young. He has since written and acted in more than 15 short films and has authored two full-length feature screenplays, winning several awards and accolades and building a commercial career as well. He is the epitome of Age is Not My Cage. And I want to show you a little bit of his work. Well, what, what, what's your name? My name is Monica. Monica. Uh, I'm Sam. That's me, Sam. Nice to meet you, Sam. Yeah. Bobby, need you to ask around. See if anybody heard of or knew of a hit. You understand? Chris Donald? Mm -hmm. I love Chris Donald. In fact, I have all of his albums. Shut up, really? Really. You I... listen to Chris Donald? I listen to Chris Donald. <laughs> That's so cool. Every night when I go to sleep, I pray to God that I never wake up. I want it to be over. Let's bring him on. Hey, John, how are hey. you? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely my pleasure. So loved that demo reel, how you went from one character to another. So versatile. I, I was very, very impressed. Thank so you. like I said earlier, your story, you started uh, in your early 50s. And like I said, you're an example of it's never too late. And that's what I talk about a lot on all my social media platforms where my hashtag is age is not my cage. I'm very into positive aging. Um, I'm curious. How did you get started? And, and tell us about your journey. Um, well, you know, it, it was funny because prior to my acting, I was in an improv comedy group for about four years called Comedy Sports. And they actually have, um, you know, uh, groups throughout the country, um, you know, in chapters like they might have like a Houston and they're, you know, they're out they're they're throughout the U.S. Um, and I had done that for a while. And then. Um, when I got married, um, I was, you know, I'm a school teacher by day and I had my summers off and, um, my wife works from home and it was, it, you know, it was what, eight years ago. Cause I'm 58 now. So, um, I remember walking in, I got up one morning and, and she's like, Hey honey, let's go to a movie. We can go to like 10 30, get the matinee price or whatever. And she looked right at me. She goes, uh, I'm working. You need to find something to do. So... <laughs> So, and, and she was one too. She's like, you always talked about taking an acting class. Why don't you go take an acting class? And so I, you know, I searched around um, the Dallas area and found one and, and I was with them for quite a few years and met some great people. And then I had a friend of mine who was in, in my acting class and she, uh, she had went and audited another class and she's like, Hey, I wanted, I want you to come to this class with me and audit it. And I walk in and I'm like, okay, I know this teacher from somewhere and I'm thinking and so forth. And uh, his name is Glenn Morshower, and he runs the Extra Mile 
uh, workshop. And for those of you who don't know, Glenn, if you saw his face, you'd know exactly who he oh, is. Yeah. He's been every general and, you know, every Transformers movie. He played Aaron Pierce on 24. He's been on The Residents. He's been on, yes. uh, he just finished up with, you know, on, on Ozarks. I mean, his, you know, his, his resume speaks for itself. And went to his very first class and I was blown away. Went, came home, my wife's like, what'd you think? I said, I'm switching classes. <laughs> and ever, ever since then it was, you know, and, and the thing, what the great thing, I, what I loved about it, it wasn't so much just, you know, what was cool was that you're, you're having someone from the acting world who's, who's a, a working actor with just an incredible resume. I mean, he, you know, he's worked with George Clooney and, and Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger and all these guys and, you know, incredible actresses as well. And, you know, he, he not only teaches you about the business, he not only teaches about acting, but he relates that to everyday stuff. I mean, life in general. And that was one of the things that really kind of, you know, blew me away because he was just like everything was combined. And one of the things that, you know, has always stuck with me, you know, even in the as acting aspect is, is he always, you know, he, he would tell all of us, you know, because you get some people who come into class and then like two weeks later, they're like, oh, I'm going to L.A. now. And he's just like, you know, you're not ready and so forth. And, and one, you know. And one of the things was, is he, he always used to say, um, it's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Right. And you have to take your time and so forth. And, and one of the great things too is, um, you know, he, he, not only did he teach us, you know, everything about acting that he could, but it, everyone became such a close, a close knit family. And that's, you know, that's what, you know, one of the things, you know, we call it the extra mile family because everybody's there to support each other. You walk in that room and there's, there's not one person in there with an ego. There's not one person there who thinks they're better than anybody else. And, you know, he, I, I had learned, I have learned so much from him, you know, um, just, uh, you know, from, from the acting aspect and how to, how to relate to things and how to, you know, he would teach us stuff where it's like, you would look at one thing. He's like, All right, I'm going to make one little adjustment and he'd do it. And like, oh my gosh, it makes the whole scene completely different. And, you know, he, he was the one who also got me on, on you know, um, hooked on the acting you know, or the writing bug as well. And, and right. you, know, ever, you know, ever since then, it was just like, you know, this this is what I want to do. You know, it's, it's you know, like for me, it's 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 a passion as a writer and a director. You know, even as an actor, I want to tell stories. I love to tell stories and I just want to be moved. Now, you know, you, you have some people who I want to go to L.A. and be famous. or I want to be, you know, be a movie star and be famous. I just want, I just want my films. And if I'm acting, whether no matter what it is just to be real and to be, you know, be able to move people and make them laugh or make them cry or make them feel something. Um, and you know what, it's, it's been eight years and I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I've met some incredible people. Um, you know, um, I, you know, what Glenn's been able to teach me and, and teach so many other actors has been nothing short of, you know, amazing. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's been a great ride. You know, that's that's quite something. And and you in those eight years, you have written, directed and performed in 15 short films. Is that correct? Yeah, 15 that I've written. Yeah. 15 of my own. And, you know, and I've, and I've done some others. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've written 15 to the to the date. I've got um, two screenplays and working on two more. Um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, it's it's a process and it's just, you know. It's it's a long process, but you know if it's something that you believe in and you feel strong about, you know don't don't ever let someone get in your way or you know you're gonna get knocked down. You just keep yourself back up. And I know it's an old cliche, but it's like you know how many doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down, you pick yourself back up, you dust yourself off because you know even like with one of my my very first screenplays, I had sent it out to a production company out in Los Angeles, and they're like, hey, send us your pitch. So I sent it to them. Okay. They sent it back and said, hey, we'd really like to read it. So I sent it to them and, you know, that was like a year ago and still haven't heard anything, which is fine because it's like, you know, yeah. even, even talking to so many people, it's like, you know, John, you know, they'll see it, that they may look at it. Um, they may not, but you know what, at the same time, it may sit on a shelf for 10 years and never get seen. So just like, you know, that's, that's kind of how things work. And, but you know, that, that one right there, my very first screenplay that I wrote is, is kind of like my baby. It's kind of like, Sylvester Stallone's Rocky is kind of right. like what my, what my, the, the name of the film is called Walter, what my Walter is to me. And it's just, um, you know, for those people, you know, of course, everybody's seen Rocky, but, you know, 
just a kind of a fun fact is that when when he took that to a production company, they didn't even want him to be in the movie. Yeah, I and, remember hearing that. And you know, it was like he's like, no, this that's not how this works. He goes, then you're not getting my script. And you know, he wanted to do it his way. And right. And it you know you know, look how it turned out. And um, you know, and that's that's kind of the way I am. Mean, it's just you know one of those things where it's like I'm very very passionate about this this screenplay, and you know. Um, I wanted to have it, you know, go in the right hands and, and, um, you know, if, if it's going to take time to get it done, then you know what, I'll take all the time in the world. So I'm curious about, um, how you feel about ageism in the movie industry. Um, you know, and also do you think that maybe it's a factor even submitting the work that you did and do you feel that it's gender specific or that it's equal between men and women what, what's been your experience since you did begin at 50 what are your feelings and what are your observations I, you know for me i think i mean f from what i've seen i think it's i mean you know i think it's kind of across the board i i think you know the thing but is, is even glenn says you know the older you get you know, and, and I find this out more than ever, the older you get, you, there's not going to be that many roles, you know, it's just like, you know, yes, I could play a dad. Yes, I could do this. You know, one of my first acting coaches, she kind of stereotyped me because the first thing she said was like, she had asked me, you know, what my, you know, what I was doing and, and said, uh, you know, well, you're only going to get two roles and that's either a cop or a biker or a bouncer. And I even asked her, I said, well, what about like a, could I play a, uh, PE coach or a football coach. She's like, no. And I said, well, that's kind of what I do for a living. And, um, she's just like, no, I don't think you could play that. But, um, you know, again, I, th I think it's across the board, but the, the older you get, you know, the roles are, are less, but so, so rather than rest on someone else's laurels, I just, you know, I told myself, you know what, I'm just going to start creating stuff my own. I'll create my own stuff and, and, ma and make things happen. Cause it's, you know, it's just like, you know, you know, I, I would even have, you know, friends or so forth and and you know they go on it they go i i know for a fact i'm not even going to get this even looked at because they want someone 25 to 30 and they're like going well my agent sent me and he's like he's like 45 and he's and he's like i know i'm going to walk in there and they're not even you know give me a chance but like one of the things that glenn always teaches us is like okay if if, if the age window is 30 to 40 and you're 50 and and you're going in for that audition give them something to think about when you walk out when that when you yeah. walk out give them say you know what Maybe, maybe he's not right for this role, but maybe he's right for a different role or, or yeah. in a film. So, you know, it's, you know, the, the thing that is too, is the acting world, you know, and again, I'm still green as grass. Um, it's <laughs> just that. that, it's just that, you know, it, it's a process and you can't beat yourself up. You can't knock yourself, you know, you can't, you know, walk in and go, Hey, I nailed this. I'm going to get it because 95 to 97% of the times you're going to hear the word no. And That's if you look right. around. You know, um, Liam Neeson said it on Jimmy Fallon one night. He said, you know, he's like, you know, how, how are things going? He goes, well, I'm unemployed because he goes, if you're not, if you're an actor and you're not on the set, he goes, you're unemployed, you know? And he's like, 95% of all actors are unemployed until they get a job. So it's just, yeah. um, you know, work on your trait and just, you know, keep doing what you're doing. And, and if you, and if you believe in it and believe in yourself, you know, good things are going to happen. It, it, it's a process, but, um, you know, like everything, you're always going to have, your haters or your people who, you know, you know, disagree with you or, you know, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. You know, with, with my, uh, with my full length feature film that I wrote Walter, when I first started to write it, um, I only had two people who I had a picture of Morgan Freeman and a picture of Ed Burns, um, on my desk. And my wife's like, what are those? I said, these are the two people who can only play these roles. And, you know, I even tell friends that to this day and, I, and he's like, Oh, there's no way you're going to get Morgan Freeman to play this role. I said, how do you know? You never know. I said, I said, I said, you don't, you don't know that. I said, you know what? I said, maybe, maybe he hears me on a podcast. Maybe he, you know, he, someone gets word. Hey, there's a guy out in, in Texas. He's got a screenplay. He thinks, you know, you can win an Oscar for it. I, you know, m m in my perfect world, my bucket list would be to say, you know, the, the Academy Award for best actor goes to Morgan Freeman in Walter. I'd be like, Oh, that's fantastic. My, my, <laughs> my job is, my job is done as a writer. I mean, he, he's always been one of my favorite actors of all time. And it just, you know, and Ed Burns, uh, for those people who are familiar with Ed Burns, um, great actor, great writer, you know, wrote the brothers McMullen. Just, you know, um, I want him to play the dad and, and I, I would love for him to direct this film. It's, you know, it's just, it's something that I'm, again, 
very, very passionate about, but again, to put it in the right hands and you get, you know, get the right people around it, you know, you, you know, good things can happen. You just, you just got to stay positive. I agree. So if anybody out there has any connection to. <laughs> yeah. Morgan Freeman or Morgan, Ed Burns, Ed Burns send, send them our way. That's right. Episode six, Esther's Bree season two. There you John go. Anthony was on and he was talking about <laughs> you and he, and looks to me that, you know, listen, if the company, the distribution company showed interest, there's obviously something there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so I, I think, you know, who knows you have a, you have a chance. We absolutely, you know, stranger things have happened. And like you said about the Sylvester Stallone, I mean, how he, how his movie came to be, mm -hmm. you know, that's a similar story. And you were talking about, you know, if you're not on set, you're unemployed. I once heard the statistic that only 2% of actors act full time and make a living out of it. What, what do you think of that? Um, well, you know, that that's probably true. I mean, you know, cause I mean, you can go down a list and list, you know, hundreds of actors, you know, that work on a consistent basis if they're on a series or something like that. But think about all the other people who are actors and trying to get their foot in the door, you know, trying to get the foot, you know, yeah. Okay. Hey, I did a commercial. When was the last thing you did? My last thing I did was a commercial three years ago, or last thing I did, you know, I was, I was an extra on a film, you know, five years ago, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still going at it. I'm still going at it. And, you know, then the question is, why are you still going at it? Because, you know, you find people, that's their passion. That's what they want to do. It's, yeah. you know, and that's, that's what they believe in. It's just like, you know, um, you, you just, you just keep, you, you got to keep believing in yourself. And that's, you know, like for me, I'm one of my, my, my toughest critics, you know, I don't like to watch myself on film. Um, I don't like to, you know, I'll, I'll critique and go, you know, I mean, I have a couple short films that I did uh, that I don't even, I won't even show people because I'm like, nope. And no I even have, my, yeah, a good friend of mine, he's just like, he goes, man, can I, can I just put that film on my, on my site? I go, I go, no, I said it's horrible because it's not bad. He goes, it's a really, really good film, but it's just like, you know, being your, being a writer and director, you know, and, and you're, you're always going to be your toughest critic. So. So you did have a film called A Love Not Lost, which you won two awards, bronze yeah. for best drama short and platinum for best actor. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that film. And that was actually in 2020, April of 2020. Yeah, that was that was literally like right before the pandemic. And it was um, it's a story about a, a mentally slow man who's basically spent his whole entire life um, in and out of um, uh with assisted living and homes like that where, where to, to take care of uh people with with um me mental uh mental issues and right. his brother um his is as, as a child his you know he even as a child he was placed in, in a home because his parents can deal with all the struggles that he had and he has a younger brother and after his parents pass his uh his younger brother comes back and takes him tries to take him out of the home to give him the life that he's never had that sounds like a very interesting film. I would love to see that. Is it available for the public to see, or is it still doing the festival yeah, run? It, it's still doing the festival run. So once once that's done, I'll have I'll have you know once 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 everything is done. I mean, I'll, I'll have the link on my website where they can just go and they can click and watch the whole thing. Yeah, that um, it sounds yeah. like a great great film. And you know, talking about festivals, I'm so curious about the process of entering your films in festivals. What is the cost, and and in addition, what is the cost of making a short film? Um, well, first, like with, with the film festivals in general, I mean, they can range anywhere. You can get some that are free. You can have some that can be up, you know, upwards to a couple hundred dollars to get into. Um, it really kind of depends on which ones, you know, which ones you, which ones you, um, which ones you um, send to. Like for me, I try to hit the major markets, Los Angeles, right. Atlanta, Chicago, New York. And then, you know, if there's like one in Dallas or something and. Um, but those, I try to hit those markets just, just in the hopes that, you know, you never know, Hey, maybe there's a producer went in and watched it or, or, you know, a director or somebody from a production company that goes, Hey, you know what? I really like this film. Let me try to reach out to this person. Um, you know, so, so those all, those always kind of vary. Um, and then like the cost, I mean, my, my first film was like $500. I think the most I've ever spent, wow. spent on a film, it was about 3,500. You know, now there are people who spend, you know, 25, 30, even $100,000 on a short film. Um, but me, I don't have $100,000 to spend on a short film. So that's why, you know, it, it's, you know, my films are, you know, um, very much on the lower end of the budget. But at the same time, you know, if, if, if you've got good writing and you've got, excuse me, you have, 
you know, um, good actors and, and, you know, uh, you know, a great DP, um, all that stuff. You, you can make, you can make great films for next to nothing. That's true. And I know a lot of actors are willing to do that so that they have clips for their reels. Yeah, so that, absolutely. That, yep. Yeah. That's yep. sort of the selling point. Like you do my film, you won't get paid. We'll feed you and yeah. you know, you'll have some clips, you'll have some credentials. So, you know, and, and where do we find the place to submit films to like if you want to uh well i mean you you know one of the one of the great venues is filmfreeway.com yes I've they have they, okay. they have lists i mean and, and i'm talking like all over the country all over the world um you know there there's some you know you can submit to film festivals over in england and you know anywhere you want um australia um and it, it's basically you just, you just go on there and you pick a genre what your film is about or um a lot of times too they'll have you know you you you'll have something where it's like, Hey, you know, what's, what's in LA that might be a good film festival. And then the other thing to always do your research on it. Cause it was funny. Cause yeah. I had written a, one of my films called the session. It's about a story about a man who loses his, uh, his wife and daughter to a drunk driver. And I had submitted to this one film festival. It was, I can't remember where it was. It was like somewhere on the East coast. And, you know, I said, Oh, this would be a good film festival. So forth. So I sent it there. And the thing that it was is when I looked at it, um, the film festival, it was like being held at like a restaurant bar kind of thing. And I'm like, there's probably, they probably don't want to show that, you know, <laughs> that type of film in, right. in their film festival. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it really kind of just really kind of depends. Um, uh, you know, you, you just go out and you, you, again, I would just do, do your research on, on some of the festivals. Cause you know, sometimes you can go to one and it's, you know, it'd be a phenomenal festival. And then another one, it's just like, you know, it's their first year and they, I remember one, I was looking at one and someone had posted, Hey, you know, this film festival. And it looked like it was in the backyard of some guy's house. And he just had like a, uh, like a, like a big old, like a uh, screen from like you right. know, 1972 when you were like <laughs> oh in biology class that was up against thing, you know, on a projector. And I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I, <laughs> I don't I, think so. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you just gotta, you just gotta be careful. So when you enter, I'm sorry, I'm asking you a lot of questions. I find it fascinating. Okay. Um, when you enter, do you do it by category? Like, do you, do you specifically yeah, yeah. go and you pay? I'm going to pay for, for actor. I'm going to pay for yeah. best screenplay. Yeah. I'm going to pay for supporting. Okay. So each category yeah. gets gets yeah. paid and, separately. And, and they have all different genres for, you know, best drama, best short film, best, you know, best, you know, first time director. I mean, there's, there's so many right. things, you, could, you know, um, so uh, best comedy, best dark comedy. Yeah, there's there's so many categories. You, you just click and, and you pay for that. And and then, you know, fingers crossed that, you know, your, your film gets selected and gets seen. You know, my thing, too, is I'm, I'm not, I'm, you know, anytime you win, that's that's always like, you know, icing on the cake. But just right. to be selected, you know, for me, that's that's kind of just, you know, it, it's like it's it's such a great, great honor. Cause it's like, hey, they like they liked your film enough to put it in their festival. Yeah, yeah, that's which, that is you know, huge. And I noticed yeah, that in a lot yeah. of films that people make that announcement that you know that's selected for such and yeah. such festivals. Yeah. Because I guess they get some festivals must must get hundreds of so oh, yeah. not yeah. thousands, depending on how large the festival is. Sure. So curious, are they in person yet or are they still all online? Um, you know, a lot of them are still online. I know like that there are some that are starting to go in person. Um uh, you know, I had a friend, like I had a friend of mine here in Dallas, he submitted to a film festival. This film actually won. Wow. Um, and he had sent me the link. It was a great film. Um, and that one was in person. So, you know, um, I think, you know, even though we're not back to normal, as normal as we can get, I think, you know, um, they're slowly getting back to that, you know, cause like, you know, like theaters are open down here and, and so forth. So, you know, people are going to the movies and, and, you know, it's, it's trying to get back to it as much normality as we possibly can. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. And I, and, and I, I guess the opportunity to network, cause I know the Cannes film festival was in mm -hmm. fact in person. And I know that it's an incredible opportunity to, uh, to network. So looking over your films, I noticed that two of them have the same character and I yes. saw little clips and we were talking about it backstage <laughs> and I said, Sopranos, yeah. <laughs> they, they love the storylines are amazing. <laughs> Huge David Chase fan. Right. Um, Sopranos was one of my all-time favorite shows. Yeah, same um, here. Love James Gandolfini. Yeah. Um, you know, um, just a phenomenal actor. You know, there was it was just a tragic loss to you know to the world and just you know, 
Um, he, he was just a phenomenal actor. Um, but yeah, I, you know, it, it was funny when, when The Sopranos first came out and I started watching it, I always had to watch the show live. I would have friends, you know, this yeah. is before I was married. They're like, hey, come on, we're going to go have beers. We're going to go, you know, watch the game. I go, nope, Sopranos are on. They're like, tape. But I go, <laughs> don't work that way. You got to watch it live. And like, just tape. And I'm like, I'm not taping it. Uh, I feel so the same every, way you, know, you do. You know, every Sunday at nine o'clock, you know, HBO was on it and I'd right. watch it. And, that, and it's funny because like my wife is now starting to start to watch him but um yeah that's kind of like you know rookies and rookies was the first one that i that i that i shot with this character um by the name of ralphie stigliano and that's a story about two young hitmen that go in to take out a rival mob boss at a diner um and then uh you know i loved his character so much um in a family matter um the story is it's it's really kind of based off of the the rookies thing the gentleman who sent the two guys that take Ralphie out, um, uh, he has this conflict with 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 Ralphie and ends up uh, having his daughter get killed. And so, so then mm -hmm. Ralphie goes on the men to try to find out who was responsible for his daughter's death, and then kind of goes on a vengeance tear and and you know tries to um, tries to uh, get his redemption. Yeah. So any thoughts of perhaps making it into a series or even a web series because it, I saw the two clips very interesting character you played very well very believable thank you, thank you. yeah um, so yes, can you say that because um, I actually have it's actually um, I'm working I'm um, 38 40 pages in on a full-length feature with that with oh that, you're kidding with, yeah with the two stories combined and, and everything and 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 the reason why is because you know I love both stories so much but it's just like when doing a full length feature, you can put more backstory, you know, for these, exactly. you know, cause we, you know, cause the rookies is 10 minutes. So you've got to jam everything in there in 10 minutes. So you're not, you don't really know the history of all these characters, but when it's, when, when you've got the ability to make it a full length feature, you can go back, you know, give these guys backstories and how they got to be part of Ralphie's gang and, you know, how everything took place and so forth. So, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of the scripts that I've, that I've written for class are the ones that, that basically got turned into stories for either short films or feature films. That is so amazing. And you had no background in writing whatsoever. It was, it nope. just was a, you know, a fluke that you were asked to perform a scene and you decided to write one as opposed yeah. to finding one online. That's, that's crazy. That just shows you what we're capable of and, Absolutely. you know, and that, you know, age, doesn't matter. I mean, this is something you discovered in your fifties that you yeah. have the ability to write, the ability to act, and you direct. How do you find directing? Um, I love it. It's just, um, you know, it, it it's it can be challenging at times, but you know, the the people I surround myself, you know, they're all extra milers. So it's just like you know, I've never really held an audition for anybody because it's just like if I'm wow. writing a scene. You know, and, I, and I'm in class, I'll be just like, hey, um, I'm writing a short film. I need someone to play this, this, you know, this girl who's this or I need this person to play a doctor. Um, would you be interested? Yeah, sure. I'll be in your film. And it was funny because like when we did when we did Rookies and Family Matter, um, the same guys that are in it, you know, it's just like, hey, I need you to play Paulie. OK, I'm Paulie. You know, now it's, it's even like when we see each other, it's like if we talk or, or text, it's just like, hey, Paulie, what's up? You know, it's kind of and it's like he still calls me Ralphie. So it's it's, it's really kind of fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's just um, I, I enjoy it. Um, you know, I think the toughest part is, you know, and, and I've got a good friend of mine who's helped me work on this film we're shooting now is that sometimes, you know, actors, you'll, they'll give you a you're giving them a script. And they don't really delve into it too much. You know, they, they right. study their lines and so forth. And, you know, a lot of times too, you know, if, if you have a table read, you know, the actors will come up with great questions and then you've got to kind of delve into it. Why you want it this way? Why does this have to yeah. happen? Why does this have to happen? And they're like, okay, now I get it. Cause it, you know, it, it gets more explained. Cause it's like, you know, until they hear the backstory of it, they don't really, they really don't know. Um, but you know, I mean, all aspects, directing, writing, um, acting it, you know i love them all the same it, it, it's it's so much fun i think the toughest thing is the best thing for me as a director is when you yell cut that's a wrap and then it goes yeah. to production and then they come back and they're all right here's the film let's take a look at it and then you can see you know you, you look at it and you make your edits and so forth but it, um it's been a blast you know like i said the one we're, the one we're finishing up here 
um, recently, you know, it, it's been great. The cast has been absolutely phenomenal. They've knocked it out of the ballpark and it's just, um, really looking forward to it when, you know, when it gets all wrapped and it goes to production and we start to, you know, really put everything together. So the one that you're working on now is called my journey to me. Do you want yes. to tell us a little bit about it? No, we discussed sure. it backstage. It's a fascinating subject. So my journey to me is about a girl in her mid twenties, 26, 27, who um, basically finally decides she wants to live the life that she's always wanted to live and she wants to come out. And um, I, you know, I had a friend of mine who had asked me, he's like, why are you writing a story about a girl who wants to come out? And my first thing was, he, I, and I said, um, was, I said, one, I said, why not? And I said, but most importantly, I said, it's a love story. Right. And, you know, for me, you know, I, I did research on it. And, and what I mean is, is you know, I, you know, I, I have a friend of mine who, who is gay and I, I reached out to him and I said, Hey, I wrote this screenplay. Uh, for a short film, I said, I, I want to take you to dinner. I want you to read it. I want you to go through it and tell me what you think. So he read it and, you know, he read half of it. And then we stopped. We had dinner. We talked and they read some more. He read the rest of it. And I said, well, what do you think? He's like, he goes, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's great. I think it's beautiful. He goes, there, he goes, there's, there's some lines in here that I've heard, you know, that, I, that I can't tell you how many times I've heard these lines that were said to me. Hmm. And so, you know, any, any time of, you know, whether, whether, even if it's like, you know, like family matter and rookies, you know, um, I always want to do some research to, to get it as real as possible. Uh, because, you know, sometimes, you know, you see something and it's just like, oh, they would never do that in the real world. Or, you know, you see a medical show or TV show. Oh, there's no way that guy's going to be walking around with a, you know, a heart in his hand running down the hall with just, right. you know, what if he drops it or whatever, <laughs> you know, um, and so, you know, I, you know, I wanted to make sure you know, it, it was, it was written right. It was done right. And he was, he was so positive about it. And, um, you know, one of the things that really, um, hit me is he goes, he goes, there's, there's two things in here that really kind of hit home with me is one, he goes, I cannot tell you how many times I heard when I was growing up, when I decided to come out was, is this just a phase, you know? And the thing that is, is, and I'm like going, oh my gosh, he's telling me that I'm like, going. Well, he hasn't even read that part yet um, in the script. And then the other thing too is, oh. you know, just, just to have, you know, people be proud of who he was. And, you know, that was my whole thing is, you know, yes, it's about a girl who's coming out, but the more, th the most important thing is it's a story about love. And, you know, like we talked prior to the show, everyone, whether you're straight, whether you're bi, whether you're transgender, it doesn't make a difference. Everyone should be able to feel love. And, yeah. and be able to be in love and experience love because it's the greatest thing in the world to, to know that you that you can come home or that you can call someone and they know that they're going to be there for you and to have that and, and have that support system and you know um you know always having somebody there it, it's like the greatest feeling and like i said it doesn't matter you know what your gender is it's if everyone should be able to have that and that, and that was a thing where i think once i told him that he kind of looked at it and goes I get it. I get it. I said, yeah, I said, you know, it, it, this, the story of her coming out is, is, is a, is a, is a portion of it. But again, it's about, you know, a love story. And, and on top of that, her living her life, the way that she wants to live it. What inspired you to write that story about that subject? You know what? Here, here's, here's how my, my, my brain works. And it's, okay. um, <laughs> it's, it's really right, kind I'm of, you know, I, I, yeah, I know. I, I don't have any, I, I don't have any answers for you on that. Cause it's just like, okay. <laughs> I listen to, I listen like my, if you were to look at my music library, you okay. would find probably, and I love all, all music. I mean, from, you know, early fifties, forties, jazz music, everything, blues music. I have a ton of soundtracks. And I listen to a lot of soundtracks when I write because it's just a melody. You know, there's not, there's not no one singing and it gives me time to think. I remember I was driving home one night and I, I can't remember what I was listening to. Um, it might've been, um, oh, I can't even remember, but it was, it was just like a melody. And I'm thinking in my head going, what, what do I want to write on? What, what's something that, you know, that I think would be really, really good. And the first thing I thought was a, a love story, you know, cause I haven't written a love story yet. And then I'm like, and then to put, you know, put more emphasis on it, I'm like going, what if I write about it decides to come out, you know, hmm. and, you know, someone, someone asked me, you know, you know, when this films out, what do you hope to get? I said, you know, if, if people can see it and be moved by it, or who knows, maybe there's a girl who's, or, or a guy who's, you know, sees it and watches it and goes, you know what, 
it's okay to be who you want to be. You live your life the way that you want to live it. You know, it, it, it's your life. It's your journey. This is your journey and you go live it and you, and you love it. And, and, you know, um, l- just enjoy your life because it, you know, you know, the cliche is, you know, life is always too short. And, and, you know, before you know it, I mean, my God, I'm, I'm 58 now. And I'm like, oh, where's time flown by? You know, it's just like, I, I feel like, you know, just yesterday I was in high school, but it's like, when I get up in the morning, everything hurts now, you know, it's just like you know, my <laughs> back, my shoulders, my arms. Right. Yeah. So, um, but you know, it's, it's just, uh, it, it just kind of came to me. And when I wrote it and we had our first table read, I only had the two lead actors, actresses in it. And, um, one of the girls looked at me, she's like, this is, she's, this is really beautiful. And I'm like, thank you. And then when I brought the entire cast and we had a second table read and I said, look, I said, give me your honest opinion. If you know, cause you know, if, if you think it's no good, I said, I'll do re- rewrites or, you know, um, just give me your take and, and, you know, knock on wood. Every, everyone thought it was a beautiful story and, and, you know, hopefully we can convey that through our film and, and, um, just let everybody know, you know, live your life and, and just be happy and, and, you know, the ability to fall in love and, and all that stuff is, it's, it's just a great thing. I agree. And it's such a relative, uh, relevant rather subject. And it's a story that needs to be told. Absolutely. And hopefully I'll get to see it. Maybe you'll sneak in a little copy for me somewhere. I absolutely. Really yeah, absolutely. Festivals, but yeah, that would be amazing. So what advice would you give to you know, someone who's older, like ourselves, who want to get started in the industry, what advice would you give them? Um, you know what, it, it's, if, if, it, if it's what you want to do, go live your dream, because it's your dream, and it's nobody else's. Mm-hmm. And you know what, you like I said, you're going to have your haters, you're going to have your doubters, and so forth. Um, but it's just, it, it's one of those things where it's just like, that's a part of life. You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, you, it doesn't matter what you do. You can look at, you know, you look at sports figures. Oh, I can't stand that guy. He's horrible. He's this, he's the worst player ever. Well, you know what? He's playing in the NBA. He can't be that bad. Or he's playing in major league right. baseball or, you know, you know, Hey, you know what? Pro wrestling is, you know, it's scripted. It's fake that I, you know, it's a guy soap opera. Hey, you know what? They're out there and you're watching them. So, and they're doing the, what they want to do and they love it. You know, it's the same thing, authors, writers, anything believe in the, the toughest thing is i think you just got to believe in yourself and you're going to have days where you question i mean there's times where i'll write something like man am i is this you know am i doing the right thing is this is this the right story is this is this how i want to tell it and even on the bad days you, you just keep going at it you, you keep you know chiming away and 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 you know if if it's something you're passionate about you know go live your life go live your dream and and, and make it happen and and the, the people that love you are always going to be there and support you and you know the people that doubt you why are they doubting you are they jealous are they you know yeah. are they are they do they want to see you fail because they do want to see you fail you know it's yeah. like oh you're never going to do this you're never going to do this you know one of the one of the greatest things for me is is you know in, in several of the commercials that i've done i you know i never see them you know and so it's like i'll come to school mm-hmm. and i had i had like one of my students coach we saw you on tv painting a fence on tv and i'm like <laughs> wait a minute that's out i didn't even see it yet and they go yeah they go, coach, that was so cool. Do you have any more? And I'm like, well, I'm, you know, I'm working on it. And then, you know, I had shot one for Ambetter, which is an insurance company. And we had shot it down in Austin, just an amazing cast and crew to work with. Um, and uh, they're like, hey, coach, we saw you in a T-Mobile commercial. I go, no, it wasn't T-Mobile. I go, but that was out. I go, yeah, you were like my, I, so I, they said, you were running down the street and a guy gave you water. And I said, yeah, I said, I said, that was for an insurance company. Like, oh, that was so cool. Um, and, it, you know, and the, the, the great thing is, 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 you know, any set that I've been on, um, you know, and, you know, a lot of the commercial sets too. I mean, the people are just amazing. I, I did quite a few commercials for Ready Seal. Um, mm-hmm. And it's just, I mean, the casting, I mean, the crew there was just phenomenal. And, you know, you do networking and, you know, I met so many great people. And the director who was there, uh, we become really good friends. Um, and it, it was so much fun to shoot. Um, you know, and again, you know, you, you, you surround yourself with great people. You, you get the opportunity to meet great people, but again, just go do your thing. Don't let anybody knock you down and, 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 you know, push you around because like, it, again, you know, not to sound redundant, but it's your life. You go live it. You go have fun. I love that. I have one last question that we asked okay. all our guests. It is the question of the season. If you could turn back the time and talk to your 18 year old self, 
what would you tell him? Um, wow. What would I tell him? Man, there'd be a lot I would tell him. <laughs> I um, uh, you know what? I, I, th I think, you know, because back then it was, you know, I was, I was very, very, you know, um, I lacked a lot of confidence and I still like confidence. It's just, it's just one of those things where it's like, as you grow older, you, you learn to really appreciate what's important, you know? And yes. as a kid, it was always just like, you know, I had to have this, I had to have these shoes. I had to have this bike and the materialistic, I, I probably say all the materialistic stuff in the world doesn't matter. What, what yeah. matters is that you surround yourself with people that you can trust and you can, and that you love and that will be there and support you. Um, and, uh, you know, just know that, you know, life's going to be a journey. Um, you're going to have setbacks as you get older and there's going to, you're going to have good days and bad days, but you know what, you, you stay strong and, you know, um, just stay driven. And, you know, at 18, I think, you know, um, I, you know, I, I never thought I'd be in the shoes that I am today, you know, yeah. writing films and doing all this other stuff and, and just loving it so much. Cause growing up as a kid, I, you know, I, I had always wanted to be a sports broadcaster. And, um, you know, it was kind of one of those things where it's just like, and, but, you know, that was, you know, Hey, I want to be a pro basketball player. Hey, I want to be a pro baseball yeah. player, you know, to do sports stuff. And then, um, yeah. So it was just, I, I think just being, just understand that, you know, materialistic stuff come and go and it's, and it's, and that's exactly what they are. Everything, all that stuff can be replaced. It's, it's the friendships. It's the, it's the family. It's the people you meet, the people you surround yourself, the people that you love. Are the, are the things that's really, really important. And if you can, if you can still keep those relationships strong, you know, when you're 18 to when you're 50, those are the great things. You know, one of the, one of the things that I had is I had taken my wife out to Oregon a couple of years ago and she had never been. And, you know, I, I, I spent some time up there in high school and, and loved it there and reached out to an old high school friend and um, who lives down in New, Eugene now. Um, and went, met up with him and, and he's a musician. He's a, he, I love his music. And one of the great things is, is, you know, I had asked him, I said, is there any way I can use some of your songs for my films? He's like, absolutely. You know, so even, even to go back, you know, right. and I'm talking what, you know, 40 years to still be in contact with some friends, you know, and, and, and still even talking with some old high school friends via Facebook and all that stuff. You know, if you can surround yourself with, you know, friends like that and, and you know, go back and look at those, you know, those relationships that you've had and, and, you know, I, I'd be the first one. I, I, I miss those guys. You know, I, I miss, you know, cause you know, as you get older, you're a lot of times people distance themselves and that, you know, that's one of the great things of always staying in touch and surround yourself with great, great people. That's a wonderful answer. I love that. It's, you know, it's not about material things. It's, it's in fact, it's our family. It's the people in our lives. That's mm -hmm. what's most important. And I also like what you said about, you know, following your passion, you know, and, and, and you did that and you did that later in life. And, you know, you're a prime example of it's never too late. And, you know what I always say, age is not my cage. So you are an inspiration. Thank you so much for oh, joining thank us. You so much. I've had a blast. I hope you, I hope you have a shirt that says age is not my cage. I, actually, the logo. I did print one and I'm thinking about doing more and maybe a little, you, you know, some mugs and handbags and <laughs> There you go. I'll send them off to you in Dallas, and absolutely. Maybe I'll put some rhinestones. I know the ladies like the <laughs> rhinestones in Texas. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely do that. So if you don't mind just staying for a little bit after sure. the show, absolutely. Thank great. you so much for having me. Oh, I had a great time. Absolutely, my pleasure. You were wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We will be back June sixteenth with Jennifer Vaughn and Scott Morrow. And uh, we're going to talk about the book Made in Hollywood, the Scott Morrow story. And this guy apparently was good friends with Marilyn Monroe. So I cannot wait to meet the two of them, the author and the gentleman who the book is written about. So that's going to be huge. Thank you so much for joining us. We had a wonderful time. Till the next time. Ciao for now.